All right, one ohm uncertified for the MVX pocket size amplifiers. Let's see what we get. What? 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 You big dummy. What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we have something special for you. We're gonna do an amp dyno drag of two micro amplifiers from the same manufacturer. We got an older model and newer model. NVX versus NVX. Stay tuned, let's we'll see how they do. All right, first up we'll look at the MVPA1, which has been around for a few years. They still listed on the website, but it's actually discontinued. The price is $119.99 on Amazon as of the time of this video. Rated 200 watts at 4 ohms, 300 watts at 2 ohms. It is not rated at 1 ohm. The new model, VADM1, $179 is the retail price. Amazon has it right now for $169. Check Amazon links below. You may find some differences. Here are the ratings. You can see 200 watts and 300 watts for the MVPA1. The VAD M1 is actually rated at 1 ohm at 500 watts. Here are the dimensions. You can see the new amp is 6.8 inches versus 5.4 for the older one. However, the older one's a little wider at 4 inches versus 3.3. They're both very small. Here is a better comparison of the two. You can see now the new amp has a cast aluminum heat sink, whereas the old one kind of has a plastic style heat sink and has this little cover you can see. Two 15 amp fuses, power ground, and speaker outputs, and all remote off and on, all via terminal strips. The one thing to note is those terminal strips are very small and it's hard to fit standard size spade connectors in there. On the control side, you'll see a phase control, level control, RCA inputs, and also a switch for bass boost and a frequency level adjustment for the crossover. Now let's take a look at the newer model. Here you can see the VAD M1 fits nice in the palm of your hand. And the controls on the one end are low pass. It also has a bass boost, which we don't care about. Adjustable subsonic filters, very nice. Adjustable sensitivity, remote bass connection. It has the input for the RCAs via pigtails and the power protect LED light. On the opposite side, we have insert terminals for power, ground, and remote. Those are eight gauge. You can use reducers if you'd like, and then we have about 12 gauge connection for the speaker terminals. There are two provided, but it's only one output. Here's a feature comparison difference. Not sure about marine rated for the MVPA1. The VAD M1 is, and you can see the other differences. These are the main differences I found between the two that may sway you one way or the other. Now, let's fire up the amp dyno. Get these amps tested first before we do that, I want to go ahead and set the overlap on both amps to match. But as you'll see during the test, there's still a little discrepancy in how they count up. But anyway, here we go.
Or as you guys could see by the test, the 4 ohm and 2 ohm runs were pretty close. But the 1 ohm run was actually really shocking. I, I forgot that this old model was not even rated at 1 ohm. And when it did over 700 watts, I'm like, what? Of course, it blew the fuse in the beginning, but I uh, put some bigger fuses in there, which you should never do. Don't ever do what I do. But yeah, I'm going to talk more about the power later. Now let's check out the amp guts. And fortunately, the older model was really hard to get into, but here is the newer model. You can see the transformer and the capacitors and the way the MOSFETs are lined up there against the heat sink. And I couldn't get an internal shot of the old amp, unfortunately, to show you, but I could show you the bottom of it, which doesn't give you a really good idea of everything there. But yeah, we got 25 volt, 1000 microfarad caps. And on this side, I think, let's see, I show the cap rating here in a minute. Uh, maybe I don't. Anyway, there are the guts. Now, we're going to do subwoofer tests next. Let's see how each of these amps sounds. Stay tuned. So after powering some subs for a little bit oh yeah she's heating up even more 119 120 121 122 yep she's getting a little warm let's switch over to the newer nvx see how it does all right let's try the subsonic base syndicate silicon base Let's check temp of the new NVX after slamming it for a little while. You can see it's still about 10 degrees cooler. So this is definitely a much better heat sink. Yep, much better design here. Keeping the heat away. All right, there you have the test dial drag of the NVX micro amp from years ago versus the most recent model. And yeah, they're pretty close except for the one ohm test where the old model actually blew the new model away as far as numbers goes. But you guys probably noticed when I ran the test with the subwoofer, well, you may not have noticed, but I did in my ears. The, the new amp actually sounded louder and cleaner on the Savard 6.5 than the old model did, even though the old model is more powerful. So go figure. There is something more than power going on here. So too bad we don't have SPL numbers to verify that. Maybe we'll do that sometime in the future. But for now, I would choose the newer model, VAD M1, and it comes with a remote base knob and puts out a lot of power for a small package, has a cast aluminum enclosure and does a good job of keeping the amp cool. So there you have it. Till next time, make sure you check out my other videos. Hit the subscribe button, hit that bell, ding, ding. You big dumb. So you know when my next video is coming out because I got more stuff coming all the time. See you next time. Big D, I'm out of here. All right, let's check some temps. It's like 111. Check this one. Definitely a little cooler. I was expecting it's a bigger heat sink. The newer model actually sounded louder to me. It's crazy. Now, I didn't do any SPL tests here to verify my thoughts, but still, it was... God dang it. What? 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 What?